Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today we're having a look at the Scion Organizer 2, the successor to the Scion Organizer. Greatly improved with two lines instead of one, this became widely regarded as the first practical portable computer back in 1986. Within two years they'd sold over a hundred thousand of these and there's plenty still knocking around because this kind of hardware is solid, robust and unlikely to die. It was initially marketed as a digital alternative to the Filofax, but it soon found many other uses, including stock control for M&S, logging data for the water board, and even looking after your milk round. The serial port on the top allowed the Scion 2 to be used for many other things, such as surveying, CNC machining, and even connecting to robots. There were many accessories designed for it, including ultrasonic microphones, barcode readers, thermal printers and card readers, to name but a few. So let's take a look at it. So, first of all, we've got the display up at the top. On the very top, we've got a slider which is hiding the serial connector, and this allows you to connect to peripherals as well as to a PC. On the back, just made in the UK, nothing else. And on the bottom, I've got a nice sticker to say that it's passed. What it's passed, I don't know, but at least it's passed. If we pull the slider down, we reveal the keyboard. The keyboard isn't QWERTY up, instead it's uh, it laid out as alphabetically. Um, pressing SHIFT allows you to swap to the numbers, and pressing SHIFT caps allows you to go higher or lower case. If we take it out of the casing, on this side we'll see a dial, and that's for darkening or lightening the screen. On the back we've got access to the two data packs, and at the bottom, that's where the 9 volt battery sits. There's an internal rechargeable battery, so in theory removing that should store its contents for about 30 seconds or a minute. So powering it on, we can see the standard inbuilt applications. In the menu you can scroll through it using the arrow keys or you can press the first letter of a given item and if there's only one of those then it will jump to it and open it. So jump into alarm, pressing A for example allows me to set an alarm. Pressing the clear or on button it acts as if it's a back button and everything else is fairly intuitive. Um, the letters have rubbed off but this is the execute button which we'll be using quite a bit. Let's start by setting the time. So once we're into the time, if we press mode, it allows us to set the time. And you do this by using the arrow keys to move up and down. I've set the year to 1993, as the calendar that we use, the Gregorian calendar, repeats itself every 28 years. And there is a limit in here of 2000, after which it reverts to 1900. So it makes sense to set it to 1993. 1993 was also the year that the Smashing Pumpkins released Siamese Dream. Apple released the new handheld, the MessagePad 100, and Intel released the first Pentium branded processor. It's all about the Pentium 1! Pressing the execute button will set it, and pressing the clear button will take us back to the main menu. So we're going to start by looking at the save item, and that's because the find relies on something already being saved in order to find it. So we're going to move to save, press enter, and this is what we're met with. Once in save, we can see it says A, this references the memory slot it's using. A is the RAM, B is the top memory slot, and C is the bottom memory slot. Pressing mode will scroll through the various memory slots if they're installed. I currently don't have any data packs in, so we're sticking with the internal RAM. And now you can create a memo to save or a list or whatever it is you wish to do. So this is just an example. Once you've got something entered and you've got a limit of 16 different lines and up to 256 characters on a single page, moving down allows you to use the next line and pressing down again lets you use the one after that. 
when you read them back, if there's too many letters on a line, it will automatically scroll it after a momentary pause. Once you've filled in your uh, memo, all you need to do is press the execute key and it will save it. If we now go into find, we can put in the first couple of letters, press execute and it will search for it. Once in it, we can edit it by simply pressing the mode key. And this now allows us to edit it. When putting text in, if you use the shift and then caps, you can change to lowercase. For numbers, all you need to do is hold the shift key. And if you wish to have symbols, again, just press the shift key and hold and you can have the various symbols come up. Once again, pressing enter will save it. When putting different types of data in, you might wish to segregate it so you could search just that kind of data. So for example, I've done phone numbers and I've used them with a double dash in the end of the top line. This means that when we do a find and hit double dash, it will show us just telephone numbers. Equally, if I just wanted personal numbers, I've actually put them in as double dash and then a P. It doesn't matter if it's lower or uppercase because the find function isn't case sensitive and pressing enter will find just the ones that I've put in as private. So there's only two of those and then we reach the end and equally I've put a double dash and a B for business. And so you can see we get a different two. This allows you to segregate what you're using so you could have different categories, work and pleasure. You could have phone numbers as I have here, or perhaps you want a separate symbol for lists. So double star and this brings up my to do list, my dive checklist, my shopping list uh, or any other lists I might input. Inputting data in this way allows you to keep a myriad of different data, but be able to locate exactly what you want very quickly. Let's take a look at the diary. So pressing D, we open the diary and we're brought onto a page where it shows us the current day and the time to within half an hour. So the diary is made up of 30 minute intervals and you scroll through them using the up and down arrow keys and you can scroll through the days using the left and right arrow keys. If you press mode, it takes you to this uh, nice list. So we've got page, which simply takes you straight back to page. And if you go to list, it will list all the appointments you've currently got in moving forward from today. And when you press execute, it goes to the next one, the next one, the next one. Pressing execute again, it says end of diary and then takes you right back to the beginning. So I haven't got any pre previous to the 14th, but if I did, it would show us any of the earlier ones there. Pressing mode, we've also got find. So obviously this works like the other find. So if you wanted to know when you were going to party, for example, hit it, 31st of December, 1999. Pressing again, it finds the end of the diary. Under mode, we've also got go to, so you can specify the date you wish to go to. We've got save, which allows you to save your diary onto a memory card. You might do this if you have two diaries in use and you're swapping them about, or you might do it just as a backup. Tidy allows you to delete any previous records. So for example, you might have a diary with lots of things in from last month that you no longer need. You want to free up a bit of space. You go into tidy, just press delete and hit yes, and it's done. Moving down, we've got Restore. This allows you to copy a diary back from a memory card. And last but not least, we've got Directory, which allows you to look at a different diary. So for example, if you've got one on your a B or C pack. To add an entry, simply go to the date and the time you wish to put something in using the arrow keys or the go to, hit Execute, and then add your entry. Once that's done, hitting execute again, we'll ask whether you want an alarm. If you answer yes, you've got the option of 15 minutes, which is standard, or you can use the up down keys and this will allow you up to 59 minutes and down to zero. Hitting execute again, saves the entry and it puts a handy A so you know that there's an alarm associated with it. If you want to edit an entry, the first thing you need to do is find it. And the easiest way is to use find, put in a couple of letters that match what you're looking for. If that's not the one, pressing execute again, we'll find the next one. Once you find it, all you need to do is press mode 
and then execute and now you can edit it so you can use the arrow keys and you can use the delete to remove letters or you can type new letters in once you've finished editing just hit enter and it'll again ask you if you want an alarm or not if you do that's great and there we are so it's very easy to edit entries to delete an entry just again just find the entry hit execute if that's the one that you want in press mode and then hit delete and of course the answer is yes of course no handheld with its sulk would be without a calculator because calculator and copy both begin with c unfortunately it doesn't just jump straight in once you are in though this is a 10 digit calculator so two more than standard in addition obviously you don't need to press shift in order to select numbers because it's set up precisely for that and because you can use brackets, you can use this to create some quite complex calculations, which it will then fulfill. As with all calculators, when you use brackets, it will resolve what's in the brackets first. Before proceeding to do the uh, division, multiplication, and then finally the addition and subtraction. Once you've put your calculation in, hitting enter will resolve it. This calculator also has... 10 different memory slots so once you have a number in the equal sign pressing mode will allow you to assign it to memory slot 0 to 9 so we'll assign this to 0 once assigned you can add it to a number already in the memory slot you can deduct it from a number in the memory slot you can overwrite the number in the memory slot or you can simply erase the memory slot so hitting execute puts that in the memory slot to see the number in the memory slot pressing shift and M, and then you can simply put in the number of the memory slot you want. Pressing execute will reveal that memory slot. In a calculation, you can recall a memory slot by simply putting it in as part of the equation. And again, it will use the memory slot to resolve this subject. As you can imagine, this will do more than just basic calculations. So you can use radians, degrees, tangent, cosine, all of these different things, and you simply enter them in. So if we do a square root of nine, and it'll resolve it, you can also use RND to generate a random number, which is between zero and one, the same as you can when programming. If that's not enough for you, you can program additional functions if you have a calculation you do on a regular basis, for example, you can pre-program it in the program function so that in the calculator, simply typing in the name of the program will then ask you for the variables and output the correct answer. Of course, the thing that makes this so powerful as a handheld computer is the ability to program it. If we go to program, we can see we can edit existing programs, list programs. The directory shows us the programs in the current disk, like so. We can create a new program, run an existing program, or erase a program. So we're going to create a new program simply called DICE. Once you've inputted your code, pressing mode brings up the options of save, Translate or quit. If you quit, you will lose everything you've just put in. So I'm not recommending that at this point. Always worth saving it, I think. Save it as dice and that's in. So what we want to do now is go to edit, edit dice. And it's already put it in because it's the last one we looked for. And this time, instead of saving it, we're going to translate it. So we've got a syntax error and when we press the next key it'll take us to the line where the error is and of course end if is one word so we'll try translating it again and success so now the next thing we want to do of course is to run it so this is a simple six-sided dice roller i'm sure there are easier ways of programming it than i did but i'm not a programmer but this does show how simple it is to do we rolled a five. Do we want to roll again? Yes or no. So the programming is done in OPL, which is very similar to basic. And to be honest, for a computer that you can program on the go, I think this is pretty good. 
Obviously, it lacks a few functions. You can only see two lines at a time, so it can be a bit tricky if you've got a lot of code to put in. In addition, there's no copy and paste function. So if you've got a repeating program that you need to put repeat functions in over and over, I'm afraid you're stuck typing it out. That said, this makes it quite a powerful machine. In addition to just basic functions, there's access to the various ports, including the port on the top and the two where the memory cards plug in. So within the programming system, you can do anything that requires in outs from those or up to 16 characters and two lines of text at any one time. So there's a couple more items just to run through. Erase allows you to select an item to erase, kind of standard. We've got time, which we briefly looked at already. There it is, back in 1993. Info just tells you how much space you've got on your memory pack. So I've used 11% and I've got 23K ish, something like that. Um, and there's some memory cards installed here so you can see what's on those. Alarm allows you to set an alarm. We have eight different alarms, numbered one to eight, coincidentally. All you do is choose a free one, hit execute, and then set the day and the time. And you can set it to within the nearest minute. So um, quite straightforward to use. And um, once you've done, just hit execute again, that's now set. Scrolling up and down shows you the free ones, and if you want to get rid of it, just press delete. And that's what happens when the alarm goes off. We've got copy, which lets you copy files from another memory card or to a memory card. Reset, which of course resets the device entirely, although you could just leave the battery out for a short period. And last but not least, we have off. One of the things you're probably going to want to do if you're going to use one of these is to rearrange the order that the items appear in. So, for example, you might use your diary all the time, so you'd like it to start with the diary in the first block. So to remove an item, all you do is hit delete. And this doesn't delete it, it just deletes the shortcut to it. So we'll delete those two. That puts the diary first. Then we've got calculator, program, Next up, we want to save. So if we press mode, we can insert an item and now we'll put save so that we've got quick access to the memo pad. And then we're going to pop find right next to that. And if you've got a program you particularly want to use all the time without going to the program memory, you can add that too. So if we go here and press insert and we can pop dice in. And now pressing D takes us there and hit and enter runs the dice program. Lots of software was subsequently produced for the Scion 2, including spreadsheets and word processes. There's a thesaurus and spell check program. You can even get adapters to add in uh, copy and paste functions for when programming. There's flight planning software, which was used by the RAF back in the day. Marine planning software and games. Yes, you heard it right. 16 characters and two lines and there are games. The battery life on this is... I have no idea. I put a battery in about three months ago. I've been playing around with it quite a lot off and on and frankly it's still going. So I don't really know how long it would last in constant use, and but I think a long time is the answer. The Scion 2 had quite a following back in its day. There is still quite a lot of people out there who are enthusiastic about it, myself included. I've really enjoyed using this, although I'd never come across one until early last year. Um, I've enjoyed programming on it, it's very straightforward and frankly very usable. No, it doesn't have lots of the features that other PDAs do, but it isn't other PDAs, is it? It's the beginning of pocket computing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a like would be great and a sub would be brilliant. If you had one of these or you know of some software for one of these, pop a comment below. We'll definitely be revisiting this in the future. Um, it's a very interesting machine and there's lots to look at. And perhaps it's no coincidence that Terminator is set in 1986. My name's Hugh, this is Handheld Computing, thanks for watching.